Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rajni. Yeah, my namaskar. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. My namaskara to all of you. See, uh, before I get started with today's uh, topic, that is the bottle, bottlenecks in greenhouse farming, I, I am interested in giving you a quick uh, one-minute uh, overview of greenhouses and uh, their functionalities. It, it will be a great a bit of help help in understanding or in relating to that bottlenecks in farming in the in Indian context only. <clears throat> See, greenhouses have been around now for more than uh, three decades in India, and they and we all know they are utilized for range of uh, uh, activities. Primarily for uh, your crop, uh, from vagaries of climate, or they also provide an uh, opportunity for an early start or to prolong or uh, <clears throat> extend your cropping cycle when it is less feasible to do so in in outdoor situation. And of late, they are increasingly gaining, uh, regaining their importance as a technological uh, as a viably sound technological system in the face of climate change scenario see uh, because you know that yield is very predictable when it comes to greenhouse growing i mean when once you are able to take production within four safe, four safe walls of a greenhouse you can your uh, yield is quite uh, predictable time bound and you can raise a crop for specific uh, market dates also. And greenhouses are again very integral to modern uh, growing practices like hydroponics or for supporting uh, forest hassle-free support of uh, R&D activities within a greenhouse. Already. See, mainly three type of greenhouses are used in uh, when it comes to greenhouse farming. One is fan and pad, a greenhouse which employs primarily as a fan and pad system for cooling. It is, it is suitable for locations which experience excessively hot temperatures during summer. Additionally, it can you can use, a, it can employ a fogging support to support your basic uh, cooling, which is uh, provided by fan and pad system. And, uh, and another type is uh, this thing, uh, naturally ventilated system based on uh, uh, this thing, natural ventilation. They are, uh, they are uh, increasingly pop becoming popular because, uh, because of uh, almost uh, minimal uh, this one operational costs only. What in uh, you require to do, you have to, you don't have to do anything, only that you have to design it in such a way you have to have that roof vents and uh, side vents or or vents at the gable ends. I mean, wind, wind is the main driving force for affecting that natural ventilation. Additionally, it is the buoyancy effect uh, that aids in ventilation. So as we go on, we can uh, explain it at, uh, much in detail at later stage. And uh, one, uh, 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 one more type, it's a hybrid concept actually retractable uh, greenhouses. It uses both best of indoor and outdoor environment. See, as the name implies, retractable roof greenhouses. You mean you can pull back the roof again. You can operate your greenhouse either in uh, closed or open state. Whatever, because ambient conditions are not always un unfavorable. So you it gives you flexibility of using those conditions whenever uh, you feel like uh, giving a natural exposure to your crop. <clears throat> now, uh, that is a, that's a brief uh, this thing, uh, short, uh, short uh, overview about greenhouses and their functionality. Now, I, straightway, I will come to that uh, bottlenecks in farming under greenhouses only. See, in the Indian, uh, in the Indian context also, it, uh, you get to see these uh, greenhouse farming mostly 
done by the same government institutions institutions and uh, private organization they don't they are not uh, they don't find favor with small and marginal farmers which constitute a majority in our country the reasons being why there are i mean why are why would they, they have a situation why they don't find doing uh, this thing uh, farming under cover uh, economically not feasible, uh, not very much feasible see the main reasons are like uh, you have uh, this thing cost it involves high capital uh, investment initially that is a big uh, that is a major constraint when it comes to uh, greenhouse farming you see you are a naturally ventilated type it can cost anything between 850 to 90 rupees per square meter basis again greenhouses which employ fan and pad system for uh, cooling they can it can cost anything between 1200 to 300 rupees per square meter or uh, re retractable again very prohibitively expensive it it can the cost can be around 3000 rupees per square meter it can be slightly less also if uh, your level of automation is not uh, quite refined i mean but usually it will not cost anything uh, it will not cost less than 2000 to 300 3000 rupees per square meter basis secondly the major constraint the sec second major bottleneck in greenhouse farming is operating cost i said in beginning also naturally ventilated greenhouses are becoming much more popular owing to the fact that you don't uh, you require add, uh, this thing energy to run the system so you can economize on that energy input when it comes to naturally ventilated types but uh, uh, when it comes to this thing pan and pad types which we all use even in my during summer in mild climatic conditions also you require i mean that uh, it uh, we can uh, say that it is uh, really energy intensive in nature those greenhouses which where you require auxiliary energy either to heat or to cool a greenhouse on that is a major constraint in as i said operational cost of they are high uh, then high cost of in inputs once you are into greenhouse farming you require high grade inputs uh, so for easy solubility i am talking about fertilizers and uh, pesticides fungicides which can be incorporated uh, along with the irrigation water while using a drip irrigation system this is uh, this is additional cost uh, apart from the upfront cost of establishing establishing a greenhouse facility and one more major constraint is greenhouse farming is very intensive in nature i mean you can uh, justify investment in uh, in greenhouses only if you are able to take n number of crop cycles <coughs> and what has happened there what has happened here also i mean uh, it is not only uh, the thing uh, you are in you are able to create conducive environmental conditions for the crop But we are, we do create uh, congenial as so a conducive atmosphere uh, diseases and uh, pests to establish it rapidly and quite easily also that is uh, this thing uh, that is a big problem actually uh, we may all boast that uh, your greenhouses will uh, control diseases and pests but uh, in uh, reality quite opposite quite opposite is true or also i mean all our greenhouses despite our best screening and uh, strategies to keep diseases and pests uh, at bay i mean they find their way to come in 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 the greenhouse and once they are inside there is rapid uh, establishment and multiplication i mean that poses a very serious challenge and according to a recent survey um, the greenhouses have been abandoned because farmers are i mean they either have to spend more uh, for controlling diseases and pests and uh, it is then they really literally fight a losing battle when it comes to this thing pest and uh, disease uh, this thing emergence in a greenhouse it is a, it is a really a chronic problem 
and uh, then again despite all odds and other this thing other challenges lot of a lot of times what happens a farmer is able to grow a crop successfully he produces a, a crop he produces a produce of superior quality but then there is no assured market i mean if the market is also there he cannot uh, command a premium price for his product that is a big problem uh, there is this uh, price uh, fluctuate uh, fluctuations sometimes his price is crash and i mean in the bargain they lose a lot because their uh, greenhouse growing means you are uh, incurring additional cost on production hello am i audible madam uh, yes you are audible okay yeah. then uh, then uh, one more constraint is uh, this thing lack of skilled labor manpower i mean see green house farming require you cannot leave it at the mercy of nature unlike in conventional way conventional growing you sow seeds or you transplant and you give timely uh, irrigation as when it is required or make uh, application of pesticide and fungicides i mean then most of the time you are you don't hang around a farm but it is uh, it is totally different with greenhouses i mean they you here you require constant monitoring maintenance and care that is the some uh, i will uh, i have just listed some common mistakes we make in greenhouse farming <clears throat> see you see you we have to we know you have to maintain a, a desirable uh, this thing range of temperature also you see you cannot uh, afford to neglect control control of temperature you don't you have to consider that uh, orientation and uh, position of trees or surrounding buildings so that uh, your uh, greenhouse is does not get mechanically damaged it is more in case of uh, you are having a greenhouse with polycladding material so it it should these growing branches should not uh, inflict a sort of a mechanical damage okay or the, suppose there are trees or buildings in close vicinity to the greenhouse there will be casting shadows it will uh, it will uh, it will come at the expense of uh, flowers and fruits you may get uh, you may uh, see you may get to see lush vegetative growth but it should not be all at the expense the light levels are very important and uh, barring these ornamental plants and the low light low, low light loving plants majority of uh, this thing uh, field crops be it vegetables or uh, other things they require high uh, light intensity and also greenhouse problem i am talking we forget to apply shade when it is required most so you have to keep uh, you have to monitor it very strictly and very closely then there has to be a arrangement of a generator as a arrangement of a standby generator to ensure uninterrupted power supply then again humidity control is very absolutely important also you have to i mean it requires constant monitoring i am repeating it time and time again because that can uh, create a, a good breeding ground for uh, for disease to flourish and again you have to keep an eye on your uh, polyfilm any nicks nicks scratches abrasions or uh, holes or torn of areas need to be patched uh, with any comp compatible poly patch material just to prevent uh, progression of uh, this one torn of area that is important but it cannot be overlooked generally it is overlooked that is why based on uh, my personal experience <clears throat> when we were using uh, even in bank uh, we use it we use it once upon a time we used to grow everything under cover only then uh, you i mean the grower he has to keep a stock of consumers like belt pulley poly patch etc it is not that uh, he gets a surprise and gets to see some problem and uh, he does not have uh, uh, this he is not in position to address issue on hand 
and uh, uh, it requires i mean which uh, we don't do we don't have to wait for problems to crop up i mean I, you have to put more emphasis on prevention of problem you know you see and whenever we try to treat a problem it is a costly and cumbersome affair so that therefore you one has to set up a maintenance schedule and not wait necessarily for problem to crop up like uh, you see uh, if you are using let us say a greenhouse which employs a pan and pet system primarily for uh, cooling i mean you have to monitor algae or uh, salt deposits on pads okay i mean you have to be have some algae side or you have to mechanically remove salt build up or use a water uh, softener in case water water quality is extremely uh, is poor or so so one then uh, no i have come to the this thing uh, for it for the class for for then what is the way forward actually i spoke about bottle next only see for a, uh, for small and marginal farm, uh, farmers who don't find favor with this uh, technology for aforesaid reason i said high capital cost and uh, high maintenance cost or high running cost also these are major constraints and high high cost of inputs oh, i mean it is a, like you if you are using a pad, poly pads sorry pan and pad system it is a it is a it requires a lot of water actually it is a evaporative cooling process so you have to have adequate supply uninterrupted adequate supply of water okay now the way forward is i am speaking in the context of uh, this thing small and marginal small and marginal farmers who don't find uh, i mean who don't see much of an advantage uh, uh investing in greenhouse technology because of uh, return on a, on investment uh, is uh, slightly long or it is not it does not provide them instant uh, thing relief i mean they are not able to see some revenue at the end of the day see that's why uh, just to, in order to keep your uh, capital costs down you can go for low profile or low cost greenhouse which is i, I ideally a uh, metal framed uh, structure with with provision of natural ventilation to keep costs further down you can use a bamboo or a wood uh, green wooden green houses a cladding material will remain same whether it is a metal frame or wood frame you you have to clad it with the same uv stabilized polyfilm and as as i said go for small size it is a fantastic option you need to need not to, you can uh, use it for nursery raising i mean uh, you can go for as small as 4 by 6 meter it is enough to cater to and cater to one acre uh, nurse uh, this thing plant to grow you can raise seedlings maximum they will require a month or a little more and then again you can bring another cycle like that like an or you can use it for uh, uh getting good uh, uh, graft union success or you can use it for multiplication of ornamental plants or small uh, low volume plants which are ready i mean which have a short life cycle in terms of uh, propagation and uh, uh, eventual uh, selling like that on day so go for low profile greenhouse go for low cost greenhouse i mean and then you be smart with the choice of crops even in natural ventilated i mean it is okay for milder climatic conditions you should not fall into trap of uh, trying a uh, this thing naturally ventilated house for places like rajasthan madhya parts of madhya pradesh or parts of karnataka for that if you go to bijapur or darwad it is quite much hotter over there also so uh, go for go for uh, crops which are tolerant if you want to go to sitil use it you can go for crops which are tolerant of that uh, those climatic conditions you then you can i mean you can justify growing them in greenhouses and uh, finally when it comes to greenhouse growing i see a greenhouse uh, 
farmer he has to be proactive in approach approach as i said in beginning only he cannot uh, leave things at the mercy of nature he has to be proactive to he has to anticipate problem on daily basis and he should be ready for problems and uh, surprises and uh, have a uh, sort of contingency plan to troubleshoot those problems much uh, quicker and in an appropriate manner before they uh, before those issues become uh, alarming no i stop here so i am ready to take questions we can devote much time to question answers only hello thank you for the talk mr ashok yeah I'll thank you pick up some questions yeah yeah that there will be great many questions uh, some three to four are there let's see uh, okay. so the first question is yeah do greenhouse cope up heavy rains or or are there any bottlenecks for this no no it is a good uh, antidote to torrential rains which we get to see in kerala or karnataka because now and then it is an uh, we get uh, this thing orange alert it is a, a perfect antidote to combat uh, torrential rains because it is not a, you don't really get to see that flat roof i mean it will be that streamline design will be there the, the moment a rain strikes a film it uh, in response to slope it come it will not stand there it will come down and if uh, suppose it's a gutter connected range it can be a good uh, water collector by default you can save a lot of water also if you are able to take it uh, through valley down gutters and uh, direct it to the point of storage it can be a great uh, it can be great uh, at uh, sa saving rain water also okay no i meant uh, with the heavy breeze uh, will it not uh, fall down no no it will not fall down see that uh, all this when you, our greenhouses mostly there are uh, registered uh, farmers also once i was in employment with a company and those days we were pioneers in undertaking this greenhouse constructions at bangalore we, it is grouted in concrete uh, generally uh, because we don't we don't leave we never use it to leave anything to chance they are grouted in concrete and they can uh, withstand that uh, wind and other things and then uh, as i said they are stream uh, streamlined uh, that uh, designs aero i mean there is a karuk i don't have, i don't have photo to share i am not able to share photo like you have that gothic types or this thing i mean they, there is a sralite kalu curvature even the wind goes it glides up and passes it can withstand because all your columns are grouted and they are uh, 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 there is provision of purlins uh, bracing materials purlins side runners all the uh, all the uh, done to reinforce uh, integrity of a greenhouse generally that is not an issue not with us also with any firm because no firm can afford failure in today's time i mean then everything is at stake only that will not happen it can happen if you leave your door or anything open and uh, you provide an entry way for that uh, gushing air i mean that uh, rain storm to create havoc only thing is that you are all uh, the door a door should be open i mean door should be closed i mean okay and are there any disadvantages of greenhouse compared to natural farming see uh, natural see basically uh, this when it comes to farming they love that uh, this thing natural condition because they get uh, exposure to full solar spectrum which is combination of many light light uh, lights or let us say <coughs> light waves only you have read about that vip gay or there can be problem of casting shadows in the greenhouse or crowding and other things because then uh, at times pollination can be problem it may not be problem when it comes to uh, tomato or cucumber or uh, petunia or nicotiana or entrinum uh, most of them are self pollinating and all that flower structure is that in, is such that even pollen will automatically fall on that uh, stigma or like that only but uh, suppose you take strawberry or uh, usually 
pollination cannot pollination in open field conditions pollination is 100% okay then uh, in open conditions you don't get uh, stay layer i mean that is, itself is a big advantage and uh, in open field conditions there are predators i mean natural enemies to insects and other things lot of times nature has a way of uh, managing uh, this thing keeping uh, pest and disease and oclums in check that that does not happen once you are in, once you take your production uh, inside because the, as i said in beginning also this environment is conducive for uh, uh, establishment of uh, pest infestation or for that matter disease inf infestations but uh, now in uh, it is uh, but i said i just want to add here but in uh, in the face of that uh, climate change scenarios as you said in in your question also rain it come rain 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 and then there is no i mean it rain literally plays a havoc and uh, if it is at crucial stage it can uh, literally devastate uh, i mean or incur huge uh, losses but that is not the case inside okay so there are uh, big pluses when it comes to greenhouse farming and there are downsides also as i said in beginning only cost other things and uh, i mean you have to monitor it very critically okay and uh, what is the minimum investment required for setting up a greenhouse for a minimum uh, size minimum size see i uh, suppose you want to do only a small if you are uh, uh, see take my case only i have a greenhouse at a home which is 6 by 4 meter only though i uh, we were tasked with uh, making it for 1 acre 2 acre like that i said if you are a small or marginal farmer or if you are a hobbyist or a, you need a uh, facility to cater to your personal requirements you can go for as small as possible like just simply have a prototype and you can it can meet your seedling requirement or you, you can grow it use it for subsequent on growth of plant also but for commercial uh, venture minimum is 1 acre and uh, rates will be like this i said uh, in the beginning also rates will be uh, say 800 for naturally ventilated house or wooden green houses will cost something like 500 to 600 rupees per square meter back retractables will be very retractables will be very uh, expensive again they will be 2000 to 3000 rupees per square meter this is only i am talking about greenhouses cladded with uh, polyfilm now you see cost of polyfilm per square meter is 40 around 40 rupees if you use a profiled polycarbonate material in place of uh, polyfilm again that is about 650 or 700 rupees square meter polycarbonate alone so in uh, i mean poly house is poly green house are cheapest but as you said it depends upon the business what you intend to do or this thing but people are happy to get started with half acre which is 200 2000 square meters or uh, say 4000 square meter of also it is a it you can uh, set up a commercial venture with one, half acre or one acre okay so now we have the last question what is the government subsidy for setting up a greenhouse yeah you, you have got me on wrong foot uh, unfortunately because it, it varies from state to state and they, uh, they give uh, the central government gives subsidy state uh, level subsidy is also there uh, at this moment i may not be able to throw enough light on that but uh, there uh, there is subsidy but uh, different say suppose your own state yeah i never uh, took subsidy for that actually because i we i i am not i am not very sure of late uh, okay. what is this mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay. i don't want to hazard a guess actually yeah yeah no problem i understand okay so are there any other participants you can encourage them to raise questions if they have yeah 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 it's okay any of it like uh, 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 this meeting is recorded and uh, this recording will be uploaded on the website also so participants if they are not not currently available if they are not currently available they can 
listen to the recording and directly reach out to you also because i'm sharing your contact information also yeah, please please do that yeah. no problem okay okay so i don't see any more questions from our participants so now we have come to end of question round on uh, behalf of agriculturinformation.com we like to thank you for uh, taking up this meeting at a very short notice and we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting the meeting will now be closed okay thank you i am signing off yeah sure yeah thank you